Um, this is the Supersize Cambridge meeting. I actually want to tell you about the Supersize Oxcam Art because Supersize Cambridge is part of the Oxcam Art scheme, part and parcel of it. When we uh, build roads across our beautiful countryside, we do them for two main reasons. First is to speed up the journey time from A to B. But the second reason we build roads is to open up greenfield land for development. And the danger of Oxcombe Ark development and the development of Cambridge, of course, is that when we put all these extra houses in, we will put impossible strains on our existing ecosystem. And we're going to end up with a lovely situation like the River Cam, Wendy's already hinted at this. In a few years time, your River Cam could look like this. And this is what, of course, you've got to stop. Now, the Oxcombe Ark is currently defined as the five ceremonial counties here, Oxford all the way to Cambridgeshire with Bedford, Buckingham, Northampton uh, in between. And you see some of the statistics at the bottom of the table there. And the plans for the Oxcombe Ark is to add a million houses, which is a 66 percent increase on the total housing stock of all five counties and almost two million people, which is a 51 percent increase on the 3.7 million people who live there already. This is a huge increase across the arc. And Cambridgeshire is particularly blessed with growth arcs. In fact, uh, to paraphrase Oscar Wilde about losing one or two parents, Cambridge doesn't have one growth corridor. It has one also the UK Innovation Corridor. And then, of course, you've got the Cambridge Norwich Corridor. Um, in Oscar Wilde's terms, you've been rather careless with your growth corridors. You've got far too many. And whatever I say about the Oxcombe Arc, you've probably got it threefold in the Cambridgeshire area. Now, the Oxcombe Arc really kicked off with this uh, document, Partnering for Prosperity in 2018, from the National Infrastructure Commission. And it had these five key headlines. East West Railway, Oxcombe Expressway, a motorway, a million new houses, 1.1 million new jobs and 163 billion increase in economic output. And clearly this this economic prize at the bottom was really the thing that's driving the whole uh, the whole uh, show. Now, if in any future document you see any mention of any of these numbers, especially the jobs numbers and the economic increase, they are associated with everything else in that list, because that's, this list is sort of five pillars supporting a table that you can call the Oxcam Arc. As you know, the expressway has been cancelled, but we're going to see that ro the roads equivalent to the expressway have been suggested to replace the expressway. So let's look at the ARC plan in a nutshell. What's proposed? Houses, growth without limits in the number of houses. Roads, no expressway, but there will be more traffic, as we'll see. The economy, a Silicon Valley effect uh, across the five counties. The environment, a green art for nature. We're promised everything. The communities, you will be involved in democratic decisions. That's what we're told. The truth is none of these is correct. None of these at all. Let's look at uh, each of these features in turn. This graph shows the growth of Oxfordshire since the Doomsday Book. So you have the Doomsday Book here. We've got time in years on the bottom axis and we've got the total population. And over the past centuries, Oxfordshire grew to this much to the 2011 census. And we're waiting for the next census. The local growth plans and the Oxcombe Arcs plans will increase that growth curve. It's an <coughs> absolute curve without effectively without limit. There are no signs that this growth will level off or will be leveled off by any of the plans we're talking about now. It's exactly the same for Bedfordshire, the same colour coding on this. It's exactly the same for Buckinghamshire, another art county. I haven't yet managed to find the data for Cambridgeshire because your borders changed a little, a little bit over the years. I'm sure it's exactly the same for Cambridgeshire. And all of these graphs raise the question, are there really no limits to growth? Do those who plan this growth think there are no limits to growth? Let's remind you of what Kenneth Boulding said. Anyone who believes in exponential growth can go on forever in a finite world is either a madman or an economist. Boulding was fortunately an economist, not a madman. He was talking a great deal of sense. Let's now think of roads. You remember the express was being cancelled, but England's economic heartland, a regional transport body, have suggested improving all the 10 road corridors shown on the map here. We've got obviously Cambridge here. Cambridge opted not to be part of this scheme. Cambridge is developing its own transport strategy. So the EH strategy covers the other four counties and Oxford at this end. And you can see these various corridors 
they are going to be developed to enhance the existing road network and occasionally to supplement it. A few new roads might be built as well. Now, in uh, February of this year, Naomi Green, who was then the head of technical programmes of EH, said, all these road additions and improvements are only to meet existing needs. Now think of the congestion around your city, think of the congestion at this end of the arc, only to meet existing needs. In the same set of documents, EEH planned to increase the total housing stock across its uh, six counties in the EH case by 862,000. That was a 40% increase in the entire housing stock of all five art counties plus Hertfordshire, which is also part of the EH territory. It's very difficult to square the circle to say you're going to only meet existing needs when you're going to increase total cars probably by 40% by 2050. It just doesn't seem to work. At the moment, there's a consultation on the first two of the corridors that EH is concentrating on. They both originate in Oxford. They go towards the east. And in fact, corridor A here is uh, ends at Milton Keynes. It's equivalent to the expressway in another name because that was the route of the expressway. Let's think now of the economy. People are talking about the Silicon Valley effect across the five art counters. And indeed, the recently appointed incoming head of EH said that his job with the regional transport strategy was to make the Silicon Valley of the Arc counties. Let's have a look at the real Silicon Valley. Let's see what happened there. Well, here's a map of it, obviously in Western USA, here's Silicon Valley. It's got about the same population as we've got in the Arc. It's only about half or maybe even a third the distance, but that's where it is. Let's look at some photographs. 40 or 50 years ago, this is what the Santa Clara Valley looked like. You're looking out across uh, fruit growing areas, probably uh, grape and wine growing areas. This is what Silicon Valley looks like today. This is what uncontrolled development will do to our natural or our farming environment. Now look at the statistics. Between this, these numbers of years, they created far more jobs, but built too few houses. So of course, house prices increased, the result of that was Tesla, Oracle and HP have now left Silicon Valley as companies. They can simply no longer work there. And the irony of HP, of course, it was the discovery of an oscilloscope in a garage by Hewlett and Packard, which started off the Silicon Valley phenomenon 40 years ago. It really was only 40 years ago that Silicon Valley began to grow very quickly. In 2016, almost half the residents of Silicon Valley said they wanted to leave. They wanted to leave Silicon Valley. Is this what we want for the Ark? Is this what you want for Cambridge? We're told that we can have all these things and we can save nature. The RSPB produced this document called Nature's Ark, be a part of it. The Wildlife Trust produced this thing called 100 Miles Wilder, saying, yes, we can develop and we can save nature at the same time. A natural Cambridgeshire had the idea of doubling nature, the phrase doubling nature. Uh, we're going to improve the environment at the same time that all this development takes place. And the phrase doubling nature was then adopted or adapted by the ARC environmental group, the group looking at uh, how to preserve the environment across the ARC. Now, there's a key document on the left here. And then here's a quote from Councillor Bridget Smith, who's the chair of the environmental group. Sustainable economic growth and the enhancement of the environment are compatible and achievable. Well, are they? Remember that phrase, compatible and achievable. This is a key table, and I apologise, it's quite detailed, but it's from one of the key documents from England's Economic Heartland. On the rows here, we have the uh, corridors, the road corridors that they were seeking to develop. And in fact, the 10 corridors that you saw on the previous map are those with letters against them here. The features across the top, the columns, are various things that you look at when you're doing a sustainability appraisal of developing any one of these corridors. They looked at 19 corridors, they selected 10. We've got all 19 here. And the colouring within the cells means the following. The colouring green means that uh, this particular aspect of the arc would be sensitive to positive effects. In other words, the development of the road system would be good for these things. Uh, negligible or no effect, and then the things in red, the development of the road systems would definitely be bad for the things in red. 
And then in orange, we've got things with rather equivalent effects, neither good nor bad. Now, you probably can't read the details of what is being discussed in the sustainability topics here. But in fact, if you look on the left of the table, you've got three green columns. In other words, road development would be very good for these three green features here, here, here and here. And those are houses, economic activity and jobs. So as we saw before, we build roads because uh, it's good for economic activity. We can get from A to B very quickly and we could put houses along them. But everything to the right of that are things we'd like to preserve. This is biodiversity, natural capital, landscapes, historic environment, water environment, air quality, climate and greenhouse gases, noise vibration, soil, land and water use. Roads are definitely bad for everything to do with nature and quite a lot more besides. So is economic growth compatible with saving the environment? It doesn't look like it from work that England's economic heartland itself did across the arc. So we actually can't have it all, despite what people say. There has been a very curious timeline of Oxcam art developments. It started off really with the production of Partnering for Prosperity. And of course, there are several documents preceding that in the 2016-17. But over the last few years, there have been a, a almost tsunami of documents about houses, environment, transport, power, water. And it's only now in July of this year that we have the first public consultation, what we the public think about all art plans. I've got a database of these documents. We're now at something like 30 to 40,000 pages of information. One would have hoped the information in some of these documents would have filtered through into the ARC Spatial Framework Consultation. That's the name of the document, which was produced in July 2021, which we were invited to comment upon. You will look in vain in the consultation document for any information at all about the growth aspirations for the Ox come up. There's not a single piece of information saying we would like X number of jobs, X number of houses, X number X increase in economic activity. Not a single word. Instead, and this is the main document, the consultation document with no information at all, there are a couple of subsidiary documents, scoping reports and sustainability appraise reports, but this is the key document, 50 pages long, no information whatsoever. And we're asked to comment on that. How can you comment on something with no information? This is the website of the official government ARC spatial framework consultation. Have your say on the future of our era. It's pretending that we, the responses to this survey will shape policy. In other words, we, the public, at long last, we can determine the size and shape of the development of our five art counties. And we are given the impression that essentially we have a blank sheet of paper and we can write on it. We can write our future on that blank piece of paper. Well, is this true? Will our responses shape policy? In five weeks time, there is yet another in a whole series of developer meetings about Oxcam Art Develop. This is one run by the Built Environment Network. It's got Bidwell's, all the property developers sponsoring it. It's a two day conference. Here's the speaker list for the first day. Here's the speaker list for the second day. This is the exhibitor list. These are the people taking part. Are the developers given as little information about Oxcam Art Development as are we? If you gave these developers the consultation document with no information whatsoever, they wouldn't be at all interested in investing in the art. It's pretty clear the government is giving far more information to those who would develop the art than those who actually live in the art. And it's almost as if the public consultation at the moment is an entire sham. It simply isn't working. There was a meeting last month uh, called Green Art Communications of property developers and Bev Hindle, the man on the right here who chairs the art leadership groups, said the following. He name checked our campaign. He said, stop the art didn't acknowledge because we're not communicating very well that the arc is about promoting better change, better outcomes and better life opportunities. He then continued. There's a serious problem. If I'm up here telling an enlightened group how the world is going to work, just think of that phrase, how the world is going to work. 
but 90 percent of people don't even know what the arc is then we've got a problem of course they've got a problem because they haven't told us what their plans for the arc are how on earth can we comment when they haven't given us any information at all about what they plan for the arc and the arc leaders group of which bev hindley is the chair is a group of unelected representatives from local authorities local enterprise partnerships and the nine ARC universities and that's it. So let's have a look at what we were told in some of those many documents I showed you previously and what the present situation is now. Jobs. Well the NIC document both then and now said that there will be 1.1 million more jobs. Lord Adonis was the chair of the NIC when the Partnering for Prosperity uh, report was launched. There would be this increase in GVA or GDP output, and it's still the uh, aim of all ARC development. Houses, Partnering for Prosperity said we need a one, one million more houses in order to generate this amount of GVA and in order to house this number of workers. In a Westminster Hall debate in July of this year, Christopher Pincher, the Secretary of State for Housing, stood up and told a meeting of MPs there there was never a government target for Oxcam Arc houses. There is no government target for Oxcam houses. He simply dis dismissed the one million figure. But two sentences before, he confirmed this is the economic growth ambitions for the Arc, and he confirmed these are the job ambitions for the Arc. You cannot have these without a substantial number of houses. It's pointless to deny it. But he did. He stood up in front of many MPs and denied it. Transport. Well, the expressway has been cancelled partly by uh, lobbying on the part of the EH by Martin Tate, the then chair, who said we don't need the expressway. EH has got the connectivity corridors, which essentially replaced the expressway. Roads. We saw that the roads are being developed only to meet existing needs. Naomi Green, the interim director of EH until very recently. But we've got all those extra houses. That doesn't seem to work either. Population. There will, according to Partnering for Prosperity, be an increase of about 2 million people across the arc. That's an increase of the total population between about 50 and 60 percent. The extraordinary thing is that in one of the accompanying documents to the current consultation, it uses the ONS projection of the average increase in the national population of 2050 and pretends that's what's going to happen across the arc. And that average figure is actually only a 13% increase in the UK population to 2050. Now you can't tell me that all the song and dance that's going on and all the interest of the property developers is simply because they imagine the ox come arc is going to grow at the average rate of the rest of the country. Of course it's not. It's going to grow much faster than the average rate why doesn't this consultation document admit it? It simply doesn't. Democracy. Well, we all think that local authorities develop plans for our area. But Chris Krasnowski, who's the Oxcamark portfolio director in what used to be the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government, in a February webinar said, actually, the Oxcamark is a Whitehall plan. It's got the blessings of the Prime Minister and the Chancellor. And there's not a great deal local authorities can do to stop it. Consultation. We hope that local communities could choose their future, but we just saw what Bev Hindle said, I'm telling you, an enlightened group of developers, how the world is going to work. The environment, doubling nature. Bridget Smith, the chair of the environmental group said in November webinar, well, actually, I don't really know what doubling nature means. And I really haven't got a clue how to do it. When people have tried to save nature, by the way, two thirds of the attempts have failed. Planning. We like to think that our planning system is democratic, but here's Councillor Barry Wood. He's my local district councillor, but he's also chair of the Art Leaders Group in September 2020, said the public are deluded to believe they can influence planning decisions via the democratic process. Well, if we can't, we're sunk. Then, of course, we have our prime minister standing up at the Tory party conference talking about cakeism. We can have it all. And the phrase he used was build back beavers, build back better, build back beavers. It got a laugh amongst the Tory faithful. Well, actually, we can invent beaverism as well because we can't have it all. 
beavers build better than humans ever could. That's what the chief beaver said. A group of uh, campaigning groups have put together an alternative arc spatial framework. It's referenced here, and I would encourage you please to fill it in. Just remember five minute arc survey. Google will find it for you. These are the logos, the contributing campaigns group, and here are our interim results. Question nine, if there were a referendum today, would you vote for the Oxcam arc? 92% of responders said no. Five said yes, 3% said don't know. More than two and a half thousand people have responded so far. And I think even the beavers would probably vote against the ARC if beavers had a vote. What are the shortcomings of an untrammeled push for growth? I've almost finished, Mr. Chairman. Robert Kennedy gave a talk at the University of Kansas in March 1968. He talked about the shortcomings of GDP or GV as a measure of a nation's welfare, its indiscriminate exclusion, inclusion of destructive activities, its exclusion of any account of environmental damage, its failure to value the work that people do for free. And he concluded, GDP measures neither our wit nor our courage, neither our wisdom nor our learning, neither our compassion nor our devotion to our country. It measures everything, in short, except that which makes life worthwhile. And I put it to you, if we don't want that, if instead of that we want this, then as a community of campaigns, we have to work together to stop the arc in its present form. Thank you very much.